I think the biggest challenge at the moment for premium publishers with native advertising is really this idea about credibility. So you need to make sure that you get loads of integrity, um, the content's really good, it should be at least as good as the normal content you produce. And if you get that right, I think it, it works. But if you get it wrong, it can be really dangerous. You get it right, for me, by uh, making sure that your normal editorial team work on the content. So I know it's quite controversial, and I know there's a, this idea of sort of church and state for a lot of publishers, where they try and keep it separate between the uh, commercial editorial team and the normal editorial team. But for us, I think that, particularly in the vertical markets we work in, the way to produce the best possible quality content, uh, compelling content that resonates with target audience, is to get the people who normally write this stuff to, to do it for the commercial teams as well. And if you get that right, that means that it's shared socially, that it's, um, it's compelling, uh, and it means, it means that it works. It hits the KPIs for the advertiser. The brands generally understand the importance of trying to make it authentic. So often advertisers will come to you and try and say, uh, we want you to write this, and they give you an idea about what they want you to write. Uh, and we try and really resist that because they're employing you because you're meant to be the experts. You're meant to know what you're doing. Um, you're the, you know, if, they, if they didn't need you, they'd just be doing it themselves. So um, you've got to have the confidence really to try and uh, ensure that you get past what they think they want to say and say, what are you trying to achieve? So if, for example, they're trying to achieve um, a change in brand perception, they want their brand to be seen in a different way, then we focus on that and then try and work with them to come up with a way that you can do that, which doesn't affect credibility, to make it more authentic, to make it work. That definitely means that sometimes you have to say no. Um, which is challenging, um, and I'd be lying if I didn't say that, because if somebody's offering you a load of money, um, to say that you don't want to take it is difficult. But I think generally speaking, if you explain the reasons why, and um, you know, give them a good, compelling alternative to what they think they want, then people buy into that. So uh, I'd be lying if I said that we'd never got it wrong and maybe taken money we shouldn't have done, not in a really bad way, but maybe we did something which we didn't think was gonna work as well as it could do. Um, but over the years, I think we've learned to push back and have the confidence to really encourage them to do it in a way that we know is gonna work better. I think the main reason why BuzzFeed wouldn't see the same sort of level of importance to SEO as we would is largely down to the sort of demographics that we reach. So we do a lot of um, uh, content in areas like motoring. And people who buy cars tend to be a bit older. Uh, if you're BuzzFeed and you're reaching, I'm going to, obviously, uh, they're going to disagree with what I say, but 14 to 24 year olds or, or that sort of age, they probably consume media in a different way. Um, so we still think the social is important, but uh, I think somebody had a, a slide saying that uh, only 48% of the total digital media is now spent on search. That's still quite a lot, <laughs> half. Um, so it does still demonstrate that it's really valuable. And if you work in a vertical market, so you're giving advice about what people should buy, then search is more important. So you start a, a journey saying best laptop to buy and you put that into Google, then clearly if you've got content which kind of works, then, uh, then that's gonna lead to a better conversion rate than if you're just trying to you know, push something socially. I think KPIs in native advertising need a lot of thinking about. Um, so clearly, um, normal KPIs are gonna be an element of any sort of native campaign. So uh, uh, CTRs, page views, you know, view, view through rates of video, all sorts of things like that. Maybe some social metrics about social amplification, that sort of stuff. But um, for us, for, for big campaigns, we try and look at other metrics more aligned with the real purpose of the campaign. It should be about trying to make people feel differently about a brand. So just because somebody's consumed a video doesn't mean they feel differently about a brand. It might just be that it was funny or entertaining. So that might be part of the goal, but really what we try and do is say, well, if it's about brand lift, if it's about changing those sorts of aspects, then you've got to measure that somehow. So we use, um, uh, products like implicit um, um, testing, where you're trying to work out how people's perceptions of a brand have changed over time, or an exposed versus an unexposed group. Uh, but for us, we would always take a percentage of the uh, total spend of a campaign, a larger campaign, and use it on, on metrics to make sure we can really demonstrate the value that we produced. So for us, it's, uh, it's challenging to measure this stuff, but we use specialist companies. There's loads of them. We've used a company called Cog Research before. Um, and they do the implicit testing I talked about before. Um, but there's loads of people who would do this sort of stuff. Uh, um, and in other places, we just spend more time looking at other metrics around social and that sort of stuff. So we have a client services team who will uh, look at uh, Twitter, YouTube, social amplification and try and, and pull together some real idea about the reach and effect that your campaigns had. So we do different things with different campaigns and it often depends on how big the campaign is. So if it's a 
um, hundreds of thousands of pounds, then you're going to have a different level of um, uh, of sort of metrics compared to a ten thousand pound campaign. We also do campaigns of that size as well. It's quite hard sometimes to keep advertisers happy with what they're trying to achieve. At the same time, making sure that we we don't um, step outside of what our normal editorial, you know, values and controls would be. Um, and it's a difficult line to tread. I'd be lying to say that uh, that it's an easy thing to do, but it does come back to the confidence thing that I've talked about before, really. Whereby, um, if they're employing you as experts, you need to take them on a journey and explain that if this is the end goal, this is what they're trying to achieve. The best way of doing it is in in this particular way, and also standing firm. So, uh, as a as a company who does a lot of reviews and tests of products, we would never say something about a product which wasn't fundamentally true. So, um, if, for example, an advertiser's got a product which isn't particularly strong in one aspect of it we'd rather you know not talk about that and talk about something maybe like the design which is a more favorable part of their product so it's about you know you've got to keep your credibility and keep your integrity it can be difficult to get an editorial team in line with you know what we need to do commercially um, but I think it's the new age of journalism if you take our uh, digital products we only really have one revenue stream and that revenue stream is through marketing and promotion uh, with magazines, clearly you, you probably have news trade revenues as well as subscription revenues. So I think that um, most journalists appreciate that you've got to work and, and be a bit more flexible and think in a different way in order to make money online. Um, but I wouldn't say that it's not without its challenges. There's definitely been some journalists who have been uh, concerned about it. But I think as long as you work to a set of guidelines, so you say we're not going to say things which are not true, we're, we're not going to um, ask you to put yourself in a position as a journalist whereby you're you know, fundamentally um, unhappy about what's being being produced, and we do really good quality content, which is at least as good as the normal content we'd produce. Then it shouldn't matter. And I think, generally speaking, that's been the, the findings that we've had. Clearly, the future of native ads is very positive. <clears throat> uh, Display is becoming more and more commoditized. I hope that native doesn't become commoditized as well through programmatic. Um, I think that it will continue to grow and get more sophisticated. So more use of social amplification um, and following all the way through to proper um, products being underwritten by advertisers. It actually is where we started. I mean, you know, soap operas are called soap operas because the programs were funded by soap manufacturers wanting to reach uh, a certain audience of uh, mainly women at home watching TV. Um, so maybe we'll end up back there where complete programming is is underwritten by by advertisers um, so not associated to their product but just because the audience is right <laughs>